Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to form past perfect statements. We'll learn the structure and practice. So let's get started. In our previous lesson, we learned about the past perfect. And it's always important to keep that in mind. So we use the past perfect to express an event that occurred before another event in the past. Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to learn about the structure. So let's get started. I would like to start by making positive statements. So the first thing that I would like to point out is uh, just the structure and then we'll see how that structure works. Let me just make this a little bit bigger so that you can see clearly. So in order to form the past perfect, we're going to have a subject and then that is going to be followed by an auxiliary. That happens to be hat, as you can see there, color in red. And then after that, we, uh, we're going to follow the past participle of the verb. So we're going to include the past participle of the verb. And then finally, we will have a complement to that sentence. In the example, we see that we're using the past event and the past perfect event. And that's because we're combining two tenses together and we're using those accordingly. So as you can see, we, we see the past event here and then we have the past perfect event as a continuation of that. But I mentioned that um, we, these sentences can be separate or they can be together. So let's look at the examples at this time. Um, I mentioned that we're going to have some sort of subject, so we're going to say someone, all right? And I'm going to borrow that second example that you see there at the bottom. Uh, this follows the axular verb. This, in this case, is going to be hat. And then this is going to be this is going to follow the past participle of whatever verb that I'm using. So in this case, uh, the verb it's steal, all right? And the past participle of that verb it's stolen, okay? So someone had stolen my wallet. Just to emphasize uh, what we're doing, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, try to see if I can. If I can point this out in the right place so that we can clearly see what is it that I'm talking about. So the subject is someone. All right, so I should color this maybe blue, or the same thing as it's in red. The auxiliary verb is in red. And then the past participle is uh, the verb that we're going to use in uh, the past participle. So in this case, I'm using the color uh, green. So let's look at the other examples that are on this chart up here. I have put my stuff in my locker. So first of all, we have the subject is I. It follows the auxiliary verb had. And then the past participle of the verb, in this case, is put. Um, and then we will include a complement. I have put my stuff in my locker. My stuff in my locker will be the complement. Um, finally, we have another sentence. Uh, that we want to emphasize and so let me do that right now okay so we have I have forgotten to lock the locker so uh, once again we have the subject in that sentence is I excluder have the past participle of the verb forget it's forgotten and then the complement becomes to lock the locker now quickly what I want to explain is how to make negative statements in the past perfect let me go ahead and um, give a couple of examples here. Um, there are no negative sentences in this little chart, so I'm going to make those and I'm going to try to um, <clears throat> make sense of them. So let me first explain the structure of that. Uh, so the structure to make negative sentences, negative statements or negative sentences. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, the only thing that changes is that instead of had, we're going to include hadn't. Uh, by the way, this is also the same thing as saying had not. So you might see that either by saying had not or hadn't. Now, the most common thing to do is that we will use the contraction. All right, so most of the time, you'll see contractions to that effect. So let me give you then a few examples, and then um, I'm going to have you do a few examples as well. All right, so I'm going to try to see if I can fit those in into the structure that we see here. Subject is I. In this case, I mentioned we're going to use hadn't. All right, so let me just make sure that we're using the appropriate colors here just to make sure that we're understanding what we're doing. So 
uh, in that case that's the auxiliary verb uh, and in this case because it's a negative we, we're going to say hadn't um, then we use the past participle of that verb uh, so in this case um, it's lock uh, the past participle that is locked um, maybe another quick example that you can probably relate to is the following so I'm going to go ahead and write that I hadn't finished my work so I couldn't leave work at, at that time so what I would like for you to do next is I would like for you to practice these concepts, practice making positive statements following this structure and practice making negative statements. You can follow this structure.